Welcome to the Crochet Crowd. So my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today I'm going to do the Softy Baby Warrior Baby Helmets. Now both of the helmets are exactly the same as far as the um, design but what's changing is the accessories and we'll cover those at the end of today's tutorial. So this pattern is available in Premium of 1 to 3 pounds, Premium of 4 to 6 pounds, Newborn 3 to 6 months and then 12 months. Just for the sake of what I think will be most popular in this design I'm gonna do the 3 to 6 month of age. You can substitute the information and let's talk quickly about that. In today's pattern you're going to notice that there's color coding 1 to 3 pounds, 4 to 6, a newborn and etc. You'll see all the colors here. So whenever there's a decision to be made on a pattern here is, and it's a color coded it just tells you that's what you need to do. So when you're starting with it with the larger hook which I'll cover in a second and the main color it says chain 36, 42, 48, 60 or 72. You have to choose the number here. It's in color coding. So you choose the size that matches to you. Now I like to go through my pattern and circle all of those numbers that match. So I even though it's color coded it's just easier for me to circle. Now when there's no in, uh, color coding in instructions say one to th uh, six rounds here there's no color coding. That means that all of the particular hats are doing the same thing for those same rounds and once something changes you'll notice in the seventh round something else is going to happen. So you're going to notice that as we're going through today's pattern. So as I mentioned we're gonna do three to six month of age here on camera. There's also two sizes of crochet hooks in order to follow. So in the instructions it says use a 3.75 millimeter a USF or 5 hook and a 4 millimeter USG or slash or, or 6 and that's going to be a matter of just following along. So when we go to start this you're going to see here with the larger hook. So that's the largest hook. So 4 millimeter size G slash 6 and then we're gonna follow those instructions. So I'm guessing pretty much and I haven't really looked that far in advance but I'm thinking that the smaller hook is probably for the accessories that will be added to this at the end. So this is what we're going to do today and I'm gonna be using Bernat Softy Baby as my yarn of choice. As we begin today's hat we're going to be starting off in the brim and working our way to be smaller. So usually we go from the top down. We're gonna go from the brim here and I'm gonna show you a technique in order not to twist your chain the very first time. So just choose the size that you wanna go, get your crochet hook and let's get going. So let's start off with the slip knot and I'm using my four millimeter size G crochet hook in order to play. Insert the hook and let's chain the number that you want. So in my case it'll be 60. So I'm just gonna start off so just one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So I need to go all the way to sixty but I want to show you a little trick. If you take this off the hook and make sure that this is not twisted if you put it into the first chain just like so then you can just continue to go all the way to your sixty and this chain will not be twisting on you. So you go eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, 19 and 20 and go all the way to the size that you need for this uh, particular chain. So I've got my 60 here so I'm just going to yarn over and pull through and through. Now because I kept it on here it should not be twisted but make sure on the first round that you untwist anything if it is twisting on you. So let's begin round number one nice and simple. So round number one all hats is just chain one and in the same one here just the next sorry in the the same one here. We wanna go one single crochet into each one of the chains. I recommend staying to the back side of the chain. So just one loop on the back of the chain. Once you do the first one then the rest of them see how they're just jumping up? They'll stay there. So just do one single crochet in each one of the chains for your hat. So please do this all the way around. This is round number one. So I'm coming all the way around. I did verify that I have now 60 single crochets because that's how many was in the chain. I want you to stretch it out and make sure that it's not twisted on you. So when you go to slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet I want you to make sure that this is like a, a belt. So it's, it's not twisting on you. So you can see so there's no weird twists. So let's begin then round number two. So now that we confirm that the chain is not twisting at all in any way. So what we have to do in this hat in order to keep those bumps in the front of the helmet looking straight you have to turn out the end of each row. So or at the end of each round. So here's where I am. I'm just going to turn and then go back in the direction I just came from. So in round number um, 
um, two, what I need to do is that I need to chain up one and we're gonna go in the front loops only. So when you look at this, when you have a regular stitch which consists of two stitches. But if you go in the front one here, that's the front loop and if you go in the other one, that's the back loop and we'll be doing the back loop in a bit. So starting in the very first one, just straight down on the same stitch, just do one single crochet in each of the front loops going all the way around. Remember that we have to turn at the end of each of these rounds in order to keep those, um, the consistency and it also keeps the, um, in hats it also keeps the um, seam line going straight up instead of going up on an angle. So do one single crochet in each of the front loops all the way around. So I'm coming up to the end of round number two, continuing in the front loops only. Come right into that, that's the last one that you see right here. So this one here is not a stitch. So just join it then to the top of the beginning or to the beginning single crochet and then turn and go back in the direction you just came from. So in round number three, I'm gonna chain up one and this time in the back loop only. So just go for the back loop only. So in the back, the back part and just do one single crochet in each of the stitches going all the way around. So this one's the back loop single crochet. Please do this, this is round number three. So I'm just finishing up round number three. It's in the back loops only. And then once I get to here, I just going to join it. Now we're gonna turn again and round number four is the same as round number two. So just chain up one and just do one single crochet in the front loop again all the way around. So this is round number four. So front loop, single crochet all the way around. And coming up to the end of round number four, I was just doing the front loop uh, single crochet and join it and let's turn. So even with uh, rounds number five and six, you still have to turn after the end of each. So I'm gonna leave those with you. So we're just gonna get yourself started and then you'll do both of those rounds. So you're just gonna chain up one. Just go into a regular stitch so that you have the two loops left on top like a normal stitch and just do one single crochet in each of the regular stitches all the way around. So when you get all the way around then just join it and then just uh, turn and then do round number six and then maybe at the end of round number six. So just two rounds here, single crochet and I'll see you at the end of round six. So I'm coming up to the end of round number six. And just a slip stitch to the beginning and let's turn. So round number seven is when the game plan changes for all sizes and we're gonna be putting the bump. Now to estimate where the bump is gonna be, it's gonna be right in the front of the hat. So the seam line is gonna stay towards the back and the bump will be here. So you just have to follow the number of single crochets that you have. So in my case there's 30 single crochets first and then what we're going to do is do, do a bobble and then what we're going to do then is then just single crochet the remaining. So let's just chain up one and you're going to go in the regular stitches as, as normal and you're just gonna count. So in my case there will be 30. So you have to either do 18, 21, 24, 30 or 36. You decide which one is going to be your size. So I'll meet you at the end of that count and I will then show you how to do the bobble. So in my case I got one done so far. So I have my 30 single crochets in for my size and you can see this is where I started on this side. It's literally in the, ha the halfway point before, um, before you go and go in the other side. So let's do a bobble. So the bobble is really quite simple. You're going to yarn over and you're gonna go into the next stitch and insert in, pull through and pull through two. And you're gonna keep doing that in that same stitch until you get six loops on this hook. So yarn over, same stitch, pull through, pull through two and hold it. And keep doing that. Okay, I have four loops on the hook. I'm looking for six. Like that. Okay, and then you, once you have your six, yarn over and pull through all six and that will create your bobble. So now you're just going to continue to single crochet starting in the next one all the way back to the beginning. So the very first time, you wanna pay attention. See how it's popping out here? On the front side, you want to get that bobble so that when it pops, it pops to the other, to the front side of it. And now just single crochet yourself all the way back around. So that was round number seven that we're going to do. And then eight, nine, and ten are just the regular single crochet round. So it'll be every fourth round we'll have that bump and we'll get there in just a moment. So we're, we're just gonna just keep on se in sequence. And so you see the little bit of a bump that's there. It's part of your helmet and I'll see you at the end of this round. So finishing up round seven, coming to the last one, I join it to the first single crochet and then turn. 
So rounds number eight, nine, and ten are all the same. So rounds eight, eight, nine, and ten are just one single crochet in each of the stitches and then just join it and then we'll chain one and continue to go. So I want you to do rounds number eight, nine, and ten and then we're gonna pick up on number eleven and then go through the repeat. So just uh, do eight, nine, and ten, one single crochet in each all the way around and then turn after each. So I'm coming up to the end of round number 10 and I'm just going to join it. So round number 11 is the same as round number 7. So it's the same as doing the bobble. So rounds number uh, what do we have here? It says uh, well let's just do number 11 anyway. So we're just gonna chain up one and it's the same count as we did before. So in my case it will be 30. So I'm going to just single crochet 30 then do a bobble and then finish the round just like we would. So your number would be different if you're doing a different size. So do round number 11 and then we'll talk about the repeat next. So I now have my 30 in and so the next one will be a bobble. So wrap the hook, pull through, pull through two and keep doing that. So just do that until you get six loops onto the hook so you can get that bobble made. And then once you get all six, pull through and then start in the next one and when you do that single crochet just make sure that bobble stays towards the same side so it pops out. So just uh, continue to single crochet all the way to the beginning and then we'll cover the repeat then that you will do for the whatever size you're working on. So we'll cover that in just a moment. Okay so I'm coming to the end of round number 11. So let's just join it and then turn and let's just talk about what we're going to do. So I'm gonna turn and here we go. So it says in round the next uh, rounds are going to be a repeat of the last four rounds. So it's going to be three rounds of just regular single crochet and then one round with the bobble in it. And you're gonna repeat that. So depending on what size that you're working on you'll either repeat the next uh, the last four rounds twice three times or four times. So in my case it says repeat three times the last four. So I'll do three rows of single crochets and then a bobble and I will do that a total of three times. So repeat the last four rounds the set number of times that you wanna do for your particular size. And I will leave that for you and I have, I will do that and then I'll meet you at the end of that section. So here we are now. I've just finished repeating three times rows number eight through 11 and you can see what I do here on off cameras that I just check it off to. I write down the number then I circle it as I pass it. So now we're gonna do shape the top. So we just finished with round number 11 which was doing the one with the the bobbles to create the, the, the bump that's in the front of the helmet. So we're gonna start round number one, two, three and in round number four if you see here MB is making the bobble. So we're gonna continue in the same fashion that every fourth round will be the bobble as we're continuing. So now you're gonna see all of these instructions in color. So you have to match the one that you're about to do. So let's just uh, review number one. It says chain one and remember we had to turn at the end. So we have to keep turning at the end of each one of these rounds as we go. So it says chain one, one single crochet in each of the next choose the number that matches. So my number is eight uh, in the next eight single crochets and then drop a loop and basically it's telling you two together which will, I will share with you on camera. So it says repeat from the asterisk around. So it says one uh, single crochet from each of the next eight and you keep doing that all the way around and this is what you'll end up with it. So it gives you a count at the end. So round number two is the same thing. Chain one, one single crochet in each of the next and it changes. Okay and if you're seeing that it goes from eight to seven to six and then um, what we have here is then it will just continue around. So what we have to watch out for number four is one single crochet in each of the next uh, 21 and then we want to do the, the bobble into the next one and then one single crochet in each all the way to the round. So number four is not continuously repeating itself. It's just a one time instruction there and then what we have to do is round number five is continue now you'll notice here in sizes uh, premium, four pounds, uh, newborn, three month and etc. You will notice that the premium of one to three pounds is missing here. So at the end of the fifth round the premium one is pretty much almost done at that point and then you carry on to the next set of instruction. So these sizes here are only for this here. So in my case my size here is actually um, here. Okay and so if you wanna turn it over I know I'm going a little bit slow here. And then what we have here is that we have the newborn is in the next one. So you'll see that the one preemie size is now missing. So here's the next set of instructions. And then what we have is in the next one for three to six months. You'll notice that the newborn is missing from there because it's done. And then it says next round and etc. So what we have to do is that we have to just make sure that you're following all the sizes. And then once you 
a finish off. So for example three to six month here is then all of this. This is only the 12 months. So the three to six month that I would doing I'm not gonna do these set of instructions. And then all of us are just gonna jump down to all sizes right here and we're going to finish off the remaining of the particular one and then we're gonna jump to the extra stuff. So hopefully that makes sense. So let's begin round number one and you have to follow the number of stitches that it's telling you to do as I just uh, went through with you. So we're gonna chain up one and we're just gonna do one single crochet in my case to the next eight, uh, next single crochet in each to the next eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then once you get your eight done or whatever number that you're going for, the next one's gonna come in. You're gonna pull through, leave a loop and then you're gonna go to the next one, yarn over, pull through. You have three loops on the hook, pull through all three. So that is two together and you're gonna do that every time you have that instruction. So then we continue again. So eight in a row. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight and then the next two are together. So in, yarn over, pull through, go to the next one, yarn over, pull through and then pull through all three. So please to repeat that going all the way around and that, that'll finish off round number one and now that I've shown you how to do that we're gonna blaze through a uh, second, third and fourth and fifth round together with you. So please continue on in this manner. So once you get all the way around you're just gonna slip stitch and then turn and then let's do round number two. So round number two is chain up one and you wanna do one single crochet in each of the next. In my case it'll be seven. So just one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, once you get your seven in there or whatever number you're going for, just put the next two together and so on. So please do round number two. So I've come to the end of round number two, turn my work. So in round number three it's going to be chain up one and one single crochet in the next six. So just one, two, three, four, five, and six and then put the next two together. Okay so please do that all the way around and I'll see you at the end of round number three. So I just finished off number three I joined it and then I turned. So number four we have to then it's just going to be one single crochet and in my case it'll be 21 stitches but what I would do is I'd, I would look for these humps. Okay so look for these, these bobbles and if something is going wrong just literally look for it and place the bobble right where you think it should be even if your number is off by like a few it doesn't really matter too much as long as that you're keeping it consistent so you can keep the line in your hat. So this case it'll be 21 stitches for me and then I will uh, do the bobble and then your case it could be another number and then we already know how to do the bobble, do the bobble and then just single crochet the remaining of the round. This is round number four. Okay I'm just finishing up round number four. So this is the one with the bobble in it that you see. So now number five, round number five is going to be the last round for the absolute smallest premium size of one to three pounds. So uh, before you continue on then to to jump ahead in the rest of the pattern. So here we go and it is going to be chain one, one single crochet. In my case it'll be st five stitches in a row and then two together. So please do that for my size if you wish. Uh, there's other sizes um, that you'll see on the pattern if you're doing a different size. So in my case there's five in a row and then two together. Please do that instruction for round number five. So I've now just finished round number five. Now why, what I want to do is that you can see the kind of the shaping of this hat is going in this direction. So I'm gonna take you back to the pattern because now the one to uh, three preemie size is done. So every time I'm now progressing I'm going to tell you uh, when things are going to be finishing up so that you can have a better idea of being able to follow this pattern. So let's uh, take a look at the pattern once again. So as we just finished round number five you'll notice that the next size here the premium size one to three pounds is missing. That means that you're not gonna do this instructions. So for these sizes this is the instruction you need to carry on with and as you turn it over you will find here. 
so the size is newborn. So you'll notice that the one preemie size is now missing again. So then you will then carry on. So for all of them when it says all sizes you just have to come down here all sizes here's what it's going to be. So it's essentially taking you to the last 12 stitches uh, that will be in the circle. So as you're finishing off if you notice 12 is the magic number. So as you're finishing that off. So I'm going to tell you then as you're continuing along remember I'm doing the three to six months of age size. So as we're progressing our way I, I will tell you when you need to deviate and of course if you're doing the 12 month size I'm not going that high. So you will need to do these uh, set of instructions here these three before then you'll do all sizes here. So for preemie four to six all the way to uh, 12 months here's what you're going to do is you're gonna chain up one and you're going to single crochet then and I wanna go in the next four. So one, two, three, and four and just remember that's the size that I'm going for. You may have a different count because you may be doing the other sizes and then put the next two together. So please do that all the way around and that will be that one. So I'm coming all the way around I'm just slip stitching and then remember we have to turn. So for the newborns are sorry for the preemie four to six you're now done you're gonna now progress to all sizes. Now for newborn three to six and 12 months of age you're now continuing your journey. So you're gonna chain up one and in my case it'll be the next three stitches. So one, two, and three and then two together. So please do that all the way around and we'll see at the end of this round. So I've now just come all the way around. The next size then the next round is only for three to six to 12 months of age. So you're just going to then just uh, chain up one and you want to make the bump once again for this size. So what you're going to do is that you're going to chain up one and in the next in my case it'll be um, 12 what do we got here 12 stitches and then you can do the bump. But what I would recommend just in case you've gone off the track somewhere just look for it and put it in there where you think it's gonna be if you're off. That's always a way to cheat the system if you want to. And then the other size is 18 stitches that was for the 12 months. So but I'm only doing this three to six so in my case it'll be 12. So just do the first 12 and then do your bobble and then the remaining of the single crochets then will be or the remaining of the stitches will be single crochet. So please do that all the way around. This is the next round. So just come all the way around and that was the one with the bobble in it. So for the next round this is also for three to six and 12 months of only and this is gonna be the last round um, for the um, for the three to six months before continuing to all sizes. So you're just gonna chain up one and you're gonna do one single crochet in my case it'll be um, one single crochet in the next one stitch. So just one and then the next one is gonna be two together. Okay, and you keep doing that all the way around for this size. So one by itself and the next two together. Please do that now and I'll see you at the end of this round. So I just finished this round and you'll notice that the hole is pretty small now at the top. So if you're doing the 12 months you still have uh, three more uh, sets of instructions to do before you go to all sizes and one of the instructions if you just look at it has the bobble in it. So you'll have one more set of bobbles to uh, one more uh, bobble to do. So for those uh, continuing along in the three months of age all you're just going to do then is just chain up one. So I turned it now and it's just gonna be two together all the way around. So every stitch every two stitches come become one and you're gonna do that all the way around and then what we're going to do is that we're just gonna leave a long sta uh, um, strand on there and then just uh, weave it through the remaining of the stitches and then just pull it together nice and tight at the top and that will conclude then making the helmet. So once you're all the way around just slip stitch it to the top and now you're gonna have a small hole left and what I want you to do is just leave an extra long tail here and throw it into a tapestry needle to close it. So just pull that strand through there. Let me just back out the camera just a little bit for you here. And all I'm just going to do is just put it into a tapestry needle the remaining strand and what I'm going to do is just collect the remaining loops that are left. And what I like to do is pull it at the end because it's just nicer to do that. So you're just gonna, it's like a closed line essentially. And the gapping of the hole should not be too big anyway at the at the end here. So it's not like you have to really close a lot of space. So make sure you circle all the way back to where you started. And then pull. 
Okay, and that'll close off the top. So what I would recommend to you is just go down to the center of the hat. So put your hand in the inside and safely just push it through and then look at the inside of the hat and then secure it. So don't go, when you're securing this, don't go all the way through the hat. Just stay towards the fibers on the inside and therefore you'll never worry about that falling out. So that's the basics of doing the helmet itself. You can see this is what you have. Okay, so now what are we gonna do? So now what we, we can do is we can progress now onto the applique pieces. So you can do the wings or you can do the horns and that'll be next depending on which tutorial you're looking at right now. Okay, for those moving on to doing the wing, what we need to do is make two of them and what we're going to do then is just follow these set of instructions here. What you wanna pay attention to is the right wing and the left wing. It's all a matter of how it's turned. So the first time it's with the right side facing which will mark and the other one is following the same instruction that you see here but with the wrong side facing and this will make a difference on the way that it finally looks so that you have like an opposite wing. So what we need to do then is just use a smaller hook 3.75 millimeter. It's um, a size F just for tutorial sake I'm using the four millimeter size G just for demonstration purposes. Just like the other sizes there is a size difference of these wings so it, it matters on which side you're gonna follow. If you wanna mark your instructions you can do that in just the one size that match in order to be able to follow it all the way through. So what I'm gonna do is get ourselves started now on the wing and you need to make two. So let's start making our wing. I'm just gonna use this color. It's easier to see. The regular wing is white but you can't see it on a white background. So in my case it says to chain a certain amount. So what we're going to do is that we're going to do this in rows. So this is the nice thing about it. So we're going to in my case chain 17. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and 16. So chain the number that it suggests for your size and then that's gonna be your number. So let's move on now to round number or sorry row number one. So in row number one we're gonna go second chain from the hook all sizes. So one and go to the second chain from the hook and just do one single crochet in each. And what we're going to do in this particular row now that we have this we're getting this established. This is the right side of the project that you will be able to see. So what I would do to make it easier for you in the in the in the next just go through a section here and just grab a spare piece of yarn or a stitch marker and just pull through. And this will represent the right side of the project for when you need to worry about doing your, your wing edges. So when you're doing the one side you'll work on it so that you can see this and then the other wing you'll do it so it's on the back. So it's um, that's something you can do. So just continue to single crochet all the way across your chain. Okay so let's progress now to row number two. Row number two we're going to chain up one and we're gonna put the first two together. So just going into the first stitch pull through and the next stitch pull through and then pull through all three loops and that just became two into one. You're going to single crochet then all the remaining to the end but in the last stitch you wanna put in two single crochets into the same one and this is gonna help create the lean that uh, a wing would look like. So just one single crochet in each except for the very last one you'll put two into the same one. Okay, two into the last one and then we turn our work. So row number three, we're gonna start off and we're gonna put two single crochets in the first one. So we're gonna keep the leaning moving over. So one and two into the first and then you're gonna do one single crochet in each all the way to the end. Now when you do this the last two stitches are gonna become together. So they're gonna be two together at the end and that will create the diagonal shape of a typical wing just kind of like artistic way of doing it. So your very last two stitches you'll put together 
actually I'm just one too many. So you're gonna put this one and the last one together and then carry on. So for my size that I wanted to do for the three to six months of age I wanna repeat this two more times. So I'm gonna repeat two rows. So you're just gonna start up row number two and three and then do it again two and three. Now the other sizes um, that you have the preemie size and newborn is only just repeating it one more time. So please uh, just make sure that you just repeat the set rows. In my case it's two together to start again and again it's keeping the lean just like you see. So please do that all the way now for the repeat and then I'll see you at the end of that section. So I'm just finishing the repeat tw two more times. You can see how it looks. It's like a um, I don't know what that shape is called. I forget. So you're gonna turn. So the next two rows are just nice and simple. You're just gonna chain up one and it's two rows for all sizes. It's just one single crochet in each. So please do that for two rows and then I'll see you at the end of those two rows. So we're now going to do the last row. So we're just gonna our turn and chain one and we're gonna put the first two together like we had before and then we're going to do one single crochet in each up into the very last one and in the last one we'll, we will put um, two single crochets into the same one. And then we have to make a decision whether we're working on the left or the right. You have to just change your method depending on what side that you're working on. And we put in our stitch marker so we'll know. So the last stitch here has two. Okay. So now what we're going to do is that you have to determine. So right now when I look at it I can see that I'm looking at the wrong side right now because of the stitch marker is here. It's underneath and if I turn it over then I'm looking at the good side. So for the right side facing up this is here. So I've turned it. Then what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna equally space one single crochet around. If I was working on the left I would leave it this way and just start and go down equally spacing your stitches. So let's um, let's just say I'm gonna do that just for the sake of doing it. So you're gonna chain up one and I'm working on the left side right now. It's the left wing but if you were doing the right you would have turned it. And you're just gonna equally space it and the reason why I wanted to show you this one first is that I can show you that when you're working on the ends of a row when single crochet it's essentially one single crochet is in the end of each one of the rows. It's that easy. So you're just gonna equally space them all like these single crochets all the way around. So only on the side edges is kind of the, the, the thing you need to watch for but it's not like a deal breaker. And then just carry on into the stitch work when there is stitches to play with. And it's pretty simple. So do that and no matter if you're working left or right it's still the same thing. You just gotta watch what side you're starting on in order to do that. So please do that all the way now around and I'll see you, uh, see you in just a moment for the final round for both of the left and the right wing. Once you come all the way around you're just gonna slip stitch to the very first one and watch what we're about to do. So we're gonna apply the feathering look to the final round of the wing. So you're gonna chain up three. So one, two, three and slip stitch into the next stitch. And then one, two, three and slip stitch into the next. And you're gonna do that all the way around to complete your wing. Okay, so you're taking the flat edge away and then you're going to do that all the way around. And then once you have that all the way around you're just gonna slip stitch to the beginning one and then you can sew this to your to your hat. So now that I've finished this I just chain my three. I'm just gonna slip stitch it to the first one. So now what I can do is just fasten this off. This is obviously a lot bigger than it should be because I used a different yarn than what um, the baby softy chunky. Just make sure or softy baby. Just make sure that you're consistent with your yarn brand. So now you're just going to sew your wing on to your project. Just like you see here. Okay so you can attach that and you just wanna sew it right through to the layer like so and then you do the other one just like that. So this is a little bit bigger than it should be but the concept is still the same and it's a really neat kind of idea. So you'll notice that the feathers want to jump out forward so you wanna be conscientious of that. So if you were doing the right side, remember, remember when we were gonna do that I did the left. So the right side then will have this side out okay but then these uh, feathers will appear this way because you would have turned it the other way. So you have to be very conscientious of that. So you have to make sure that you're worrying about left or right when you get to do that. So that's it for now and just sew it to your hat and enjoy and that's how you would do this fun little hat and this here 
is a really cool idea. So until next time it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. We'll see ya.